So in this lecture, I want to talk about registers. Um, they're essentially storage units that can hold an n bit value. And this, a register is composed of a group of n flip flops, where each flip flop stores one bit of information. For example, here is a four bit register, so flip flops data is coming in to each. So data here, this is a, a four bit number, sorry, this should be a D. D3, D2, D1, D0. That can be read into this register. And the register value R3, R2, R1, R0 can be read out. And of course, all of these flip flops, as always, are connected to a clock signal. OK, so that's really the basic idea of a flip-flop. Good. So now, a slightly more interesting device is the controlled register. Right? And what the, what the controlled register is supposed to do is sort of shown in the top left in this uh, truth table. So it's something where you have inputs that are called reset and load. And if you, both of them are set to 0, then the register is just holding information. When you set reset to be true, then every value in, the f in all the flip-flops are get set to zero. On the other hand, if you loading, then new data can be read into the system. And so the question is, how do you realize this choice? And of course, you can design a combinational circuit that does that, but in some ways you don't need to. You can just use an element that we've introduced recently, which is a, a multiplexer to kind of make it easy to make this choice. Right? So what you're going to do is you are going to place a multiplexer in front of the data input of every one of these registers. So like shown here, this are, and then you're going to use um, reset and load as the control inputs on this multiplexers. Let's connect them here. This is reset. This is load. Right? And obviously, all of them are connected to the same controls, all of these four multiplexers. And then, so you have just have to think through the different possible combinations. So when you have reset and load, both to be 0, then you're holding data. Um, let me just use a different color here. So the data that you currently have in here is value 3, value 2, value 1, value 0. So it's a 4-bit number. And when you're holding, it just means that at the clock edge, you're taking this value and feeding it right back into, um, into your system. OK. So that was sort of position 0, 0. Now, for position 0, 1, um, you're loading new data. Um, so basically here, the next input is just going to be d0, d1, d2, d3, where the data that you're going to load is the 4-bit number d3, d2, d1, d0. For 1, 0, you're, set, you're resetting. So what you're inputting here is just a 0. And then the, th the last combination, 1, 1, is not defined here. So you can make any choice you like. So I'm going to say that 1, 1 is also a reset. And so I'm just going to input 0 here again. OK. So now, sort of using multiplexers, um, I've been able to 
realize the so-called controlled register where I get to choose whether I'm holding a value, I'm reading in a new value, or possibly I'm resetting the register. Another type of register um, that's, that you've already seen in the lab and that's going to come in handy in a lot of situations is a shift register, right? So here you're actually connecting um, multiple flip-flops sort of in series and the register allows you to shift binary values in one or possibly both directions. And so this is the very basic um, module. So let me just label these intermediate arrows here as Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. And now, of course, the question is what happens to these registers, to this register as, um, as you go through multiple clock cycles? And I think this is fairly intuitive, right? So at the clock cycle 0, there's some value i0 on the input. And you actually don't know, or at this point, what the values are on any of the other wires. Now at the next clock cycle, you're reading in a new input, but the value that's held on the input now, of course, becomes shifted or read into the, the first flip-flop in this register and becomes the value of Q0. So you're kind of moving over here. And all these values shift along. And this essentially just keeps happening. So you're reading in new information at each clock cycle. And the old information moves to the right bit by bit. Okay. And sort of in the at the fourth clock cycle, you've now filled um, the f the full like a four bit number, sorry, into this register. Okay, and then of course this continues, and you're sort of shifting in bits, um, one bit per cycle to the right. Good, so that's relatively straightforward, and I think you probably already knew this. Um, of course, there's reasons why these type of registers are interesting. So for example, when you want to do data transfer, there's essentially two modes of communication. There's parallel and serial communication. When you do parallel communication, basically implies that all bits up to a certain size are transferred at the same time, while in serial, the extreme one bit is transferred at a time. And the shift register can be used to realize serial um, information or data transfer. So imagine just for, for a second that this is a system where this is your computer. And this is a printer. Now in a system like that, there's sort of a, a rate limiting step, which is that actually the mechanical operation of printing is incredibly slow compared to any of the electronic information processing. So really transferring c uh, information from the computer to a printer doesn't have to be particularly fast. And generally, you know, if you use fewer wires, it's cheaper. And so the idea would be that although within your computer, you might want to you know, have fast information processing and things happening in parallel, let's say, for example, in a sort of 64-bit um, information processing in one cycle. Within the, within the computer, the actual transfer, you might be OK to just transfer through a single wire and use 64 cycles to transfer that same amount of information that you in, within the computer you might just be able to shift around in a single cycle. And again, the reason that you don't care is that the actual printing is going to be slow anyway and it might save you a lot of money to just not use as many wires. So it's interesting to shift between different modes of information processing. Um, and certainly, as you've just seen, a shift register can help you do this sort of bit by bit information transfer. But if you want to do both, so you have parallel and serial modes, it, you, what you need is essentially a shift register with parallel load. And I've sort of pre-drawn a little bit of this here. 
So the idea now is that, again, it's a controlled register where all the register here are hooked up to the same controls, or all the multiplexers here are hooked up to the same controls, now called shift and load. And if both shift and load are set to zero, then I'm holding. So again, the value here, let's call it Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. When I'm in holding mode, I'm just feeding that back into um, the data port here. So it's Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. And that, again, that happens when shift and load are set to 0. Now, um, for 0, 1, or 1, 1, I want to realize a parallel load operation. So this just means, just as before, that there is some sort of parallel, some, in this case, 4-bit number um, P3 that gets loaded into where each bit of that 4-bit number gets loaded into one register. And this operation happens in parallel. right? And that's two cases here, 1, 1, and 0, 1. Great. And then in some ways, the most interesting mode is, of course, the shift mode, when you have 1, 0 as your control input. So shift is true, but load is not. In that case, you want to take the data from here, from the lower order bit, and move it up to the next order bit. So essentially, you're taking Q0 and moving it into the second um, flip-flop here. You're moving Q1 from the second to the third, and you're moving Q2 into the, sorry, yeah, you're moving Q2 into the last um, flip-flop up here. So, and then of course, at the what you're reading into the very first flip-flop is just some sort of input, right? So you're taking the input, reading it in, and then taking the output or the value held on any of the other flip-flops and just moving it one up in the cascade. So again, this is relatively straightforward and sort of easy to realize if you combine multiplexers with your um, with your flip-flops. Great. So now I just want to walk you through, now that we have all of this, right? we have essentially registers that have parallel load um, and that can shift information. We can combine a couple of these uh, shift registers with parallel load to actually build um, an information transfer system that allows you to convert from parallel to serial. So again, you could imagine that what we have here is a printer or a computer and a printer. And we now want to shift information between these two devices. Good. So what I've drawn here at the bottom is essentially showing what we're going to try to do is to figure out what happens at different clock cycles. And what mode here means is that basically the register or the, uh, sorry, the multiplexers are going to be set to either the shift or the load mode. And essentially, you can think of both of these devices here as, as the core element here is in both cases a, a shift register with parallel load. And you can, of course, choose the modes of these two registers independently. And so to begin, you might say, well, the first thing I want to do to actually transfer data from my computer to the printer is I need to read data into my shift register. So I'm going to set this to load. Okay, And I don't know what's currently in here, but I don't care. And then similarly over here, and I'm not going to set this mode sort of setting this to x2. I don't care what the mode is currently. Um, I'm not going to do anything. OK, so at the next clock edge, right? I'm going to load. But of course, I have to kind of look ahead. So I have to say that at the same time, I'm also going to switch the mode now to shift mode, because the load instructions sort of applied at the clock edge, I'm loading 
and simultaneously also changing the control inputs to the multiplexer. So the load operation, of course, results in data d0, d1, d2, d3 being read into the multiplexer. And now I'm also going to switch this register here to shift mode. And of course, there's still no interesting data over there. And now I'm going to shift. I'll also keep shifting. So this is now x, d0, d1, d2, d3. I'll keep this in shift mode, as I've indicated. So the next operation, right, I'm going to, this is going to be x, x, d0, d1, oops, um, d2, d3, x, and x. You can actually say that on the right-hand side, I'm never going to load any data into the printer directly, so I can just keep this in shift mode forever. I don't need to think about it. On the computer side, of course, I eventually want to go back to the load um, mode, so I can actually bring in new data once everything's shifted over. Here, I'm still staying in the shift mode, because I'm going to do one more shift operation here. Sorry. Okay. But now one thing that I means sort of the whole reason why I'm doing this, the whole maybe which is maybe not totally intuitive, is I can actually already at this point switch back to load mode. Why is that true, right? Why can I actually switch to load uh, without overriding this d0 value? Because of course, you know, when I do the load operation, I'm going to load in a new number, so d0 prime, d1 prime, d2 prime, d3 prime. But d0, right, is essentially sitting on the wire that's connected to the input terminal of the first flip-flop in the in the printer shift register. So at the clock edge, that bit will actually be read into the next um, will be will be read into that register, even though the registers in the in the computer will sort of be refilled with new data. And the, the, in some ways, the whole reason I'm doing this example is because this is slightly counterintuitive, and you have to think a bit about it a little bit. But it's actually very helpful because it saves you one sort of cycle of operation relative to what one might intuitively think. And of course, then the whole cycle um, continues again. And now the complete number that you've initially loaded into the computer shift register has now ended up in the printer and could presumably be read out from there and processed further. <coughs>